Hello everyone, and welcome to Lesson 2 of Xcode Tips. In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at groups and files in Xcode. I don't know why I always say we, because I don't think there's anybody else here, but anyway, um, you know, maybe you guys, I'm not really sure. Anyway, we're going to be examining this. So, um, just a precursor to all of these tutorials in the Xcode Tips section, Basically, they're all in uh, basically independent or uh, not dependent on each other. Um, they're you know you can go and watch lesson seven if that uh, particular topic interests you or um, you know everything else. So uh, none of them you don't have to watch the previous tutorials to know where you are. Um, so you know if you don't care about any of these tutorials and just want to watch one, feel free. So let's get on to this tutorial. So. Uh, we're looking at the groups and files and how they work in Xcode. So by groups and files, I mean everything from here to here. Uh, everything else isn't related to that really, even though it's under the groups and files heading, it's really not related to that so much. So this from here to here is really the groups and files section, I guess you could say. So the common misconception in uh, creating groups in Xcode is that you're creating a new folder. So if I was to look at this, I'd say, well, all my source code is in the Lesson 2 folder, then it's in a source folder, and that's where it's located. So if I go to the Finder and check this out, see how authentic that is, um, you can see that everything is in the Lesson 2 folder. Nothing's actually in, um, nothing's in any source folder. And the reason for that is that groups in Xcode don't actually create a new folder on your hard drive. They're just so that you um, in Xcode can see your code easier or visualize it better. So basically they're they're not real they're not real groups, they're just visual representations of um, grouping, I guess you could say. So they're not actually creating the folders because that would change the location and that makes everything really annoying. So Xcode just has a way of visually showing you that it's in a group. So let's do some examples with this and we're going to zoom in a bit here just so we can, you know, get the full picture. So we'll go to the action button, hit the action button, go to add new, and then you just have to hit new group. And when you hit that, it will create a new group in the groups and files section and now you can just call it whatever you want. I'm going to call this one shapes and now I'm going to take everything that's a shapes class and I'm going to throw it in the shapes group. So now you can see that everything is in this nice shapes group. So if I had, you know, a big program with over 50 files, I can easily find where the shapes are in my projects and I don't have to, you know, go searching through 50 different name files to just find what I want. So now I have an easier way of just seeing that these are the shapes. So I could even keep narrowing this down if I want. I don't have to stop there. So let's just go and hit new group again in the shapes folder. And I could just say quadrilaterals. And I think that's how you spell it. And I'm not going to correct it if I'm wrong anyway. So who cares? And if I want to put all the quadrilaterals in that folder, that's all I have to do is throw all the quadrilaterals into that folder. If any of you don't know what a quadrilateral is, it's simply a shape with four sides, I think. It better be, or else this is all wrong. But anyway, those uh, that's what I believe a quadrilateral is, so um, I guess you're going to believe with me. But um, anyway, I just created a new quadrilaterals group in the shapes group, and as you can see, we, we're kind of starting this hierarchy of uh, how things work. So. If I'm programming something, or if I'm in a big program, I should say, and I have tons of files, and quickly I'm thinking, all right, I gotta find this shapes folder, or I'm I'm looking for a square, so it should be in this shapes, and it's definitely a quadrilateral. So here we go, where there's a square, and um, you know, think about that. If you had tons of files, you'd have to look forever trying to find exactly what you want. So that's uh. You know, this way of organization is uh, great, and it, it definitely simplifies the process when you have a lot of different things going. So, um, I guess I should cover how to delete a group, though, if you don't want it. So let's say I want to take, I want to get rid of this quadrilaterals group, 
So now I could just, I could take it out of the quadrilaterals group and I'll just put it, I want to keep it in the shapes group though. So I'll just drag it up like that. And now you can see there's nothing in the quadrilaterals group. So I'm free to delete it and it will disappear. If I still have files in a group and I hit the delete key, it's going to hit this. And basically uh, you don't want to do anything after that. Just hit cancel because L if you do that, you're going to be deleting everything in the file. And you know, generally you don't want to do that. Unless you do, go ahead. But um, that those are just the warnings that you get if um, if you're trying to delete something with uh, if you're trying to delete a group that has files inside of it. So that's pretty much how groups and files work. And all you really have to get out of it is that um, nothing. There's no new folders created in Finder. So everything is just visual. It's just Xcode's way of organizing your files. So one last time we'll go into Finder, and as you can see, even though we've created this new shapes group, it hasn't created a new folder in X or in the Finder. We're still in our lesson two, our lesson two folder. So uh, that's pretty much how shapes, or not shapes, that's how groups and files work in Xcode, and it's not that difficult, but it's a great way to organize your code. So uh, it's just another awesome tutorial and uh, easy concept to understand. So I hope you I hope you enjoyed it, and many more of these Xcode tutorials I, I probably keep making. Uh, just a little update on the schedule, though. Um, I know I haven't been making tutorials as often, and I, I think I'm going to be trying to shoot for, trying to get stuff out every weekend now. Um, during the week, it's difficult for me to uh, create new tutorials, but definitely you should, uh, you can pretty much expect a new tutorial to be made for most of the weekends. Um, and definitely I make some things during the week too. I don't really have a consistent schedule. I apologize for that. But um, if you're definitely looking for new stuff, definitely things should be coming out on the weekend if you're looking for that. And the programming tutorials, still more stuff is coming. So um, yeah, just please subscribe to the channel and you'll get all the updates in your subscription feed anyway. So uh, I'll see you next tutorial, either Xcode tips or programming. Either way, I'll see you then.